Yeah. We about to lay it on the line right now, y'all. Uh, for sure. I got my cousins in the house right about now. Chilly, chill. Welcome to Daytime Friends. I'm so so house party with Daryl Chill Mitchell. Come on, y'all. Daryl, yay, he's here. He Hi. Here. Yay. Yay, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? We are here on New Orleans. I am on Bourbon Street. The noise is outrageous because it's Bourbon Street. We're going to make this thing happen the best way we can. And let's keep the party moving, y'all. Okay, and you're okay. on set, working hard as usual. New Orleans is live bands all over the state. I heard you New Orleans is lit. I, I'm out here on the corner trying to do this interview. People is, is speaking, so I got to give them love. Do you have your beads ready? Are you throwing your beads up? Oh, yeah, the beads is hot. The beads is popping. <laughs> okay. okay. Can you... Can you tell us how you got your nickname, Chill? What happened was, back in the day, when I was rapping, well, growing up, they used to call me Chili Dog. And what happened when we got started the group, Groove Be Chill, we had tried to figure out a name for the group, so we cut off everybody's name. So Groovy Groove and Be Successful and Chili Dog, we cut it all off. And it started Groove B Chill. That's why, but really, my rap name was Chili Dog. Chili Dog. Yeah, so we cut it off. We cut the chill. So okay. it's Groove B Chill. Groove B Chill, okay. Yeah. Okay. You still got bars? Huh? You still got bars? Can you freestyle? Come on, girl, stop that. I, I keep bars. I keep 16 in the chamber. Okay. So can you hear your side right now? Come on, girl. I'm always ready. Check it okay. out. First album, uh-huh. most of y'all was sleep. I went through the studio with a broom, made a clean street. Started with zero, jumped to the game. My first single of hip hop music established name. That after that show, I the show. Fill up fatigue, batter up down, playing in the major league. I did the division that I clinched. According to all illustrations, the big old print. Couldn't believe it shed a tear. I didn't need for picture. I was the rookie of the year. I made the impact when I begin with the flow. I back in a big time dope and I'm on the coat. Hey. I keep lyrics. Yeah, we heard you. I heard you. Yeah. I saw a video of him and Snoop and uh, Michael Strahan. It was real good. It was a video of the brothers. It was a oh, what about? Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was yeah, crazy. that was a blessing. That was a real blessing, man, because I never did anything with Snoop. And through television and movies, I was able to get in the studio with Snoop. And Snoop was like, yo, dog. And as I laid it down, he was like, yo, bruh, where was you when I was doing my next album? Because I would have loved that that fit on my next album. Right, right. I like that. I like that. So, I do thought you, think you um, go back to. I'm sorry, go ahead, finish. You recently visited South Africa? I went to South Africa. I woke up one day and I said, yo, my next trip is going to South Africa. It wasn't planned. It wasn't nothing. I booked the trip and I left. You got to go to West then. That's where my people's from, West. Yo, okay. Well, that's my next trip. Well, how was it? Go to Senegal, go to it was the most. It was the most. It was the most incredible trip of my life. I told everybody, if it was any closer, I would be working from South Africa. Wow! Really, really, yeah. Yes, uh, Every, everybody says that once they visit, they say it's an amazing experience. I loved it. I, I had the best. Everybody was just a lot of love, a whole lot of love. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's great. Um, I also noticed that you've been working with uh, Mr. LeVar Burton. Man, that was, as a matter of fact, it's interesting because the next script we're doing is, is a show that I'm doing. It's about me. It's about my character on NCIS New Orleans, and LeVar is coming back to do that script. So you know me and him is going to turn that thing on fire. Yes, definitely. That, that, yeah, that's going to be good. That's going to be real good. 
Wow. So, you know, I heard also you have a favorite restaurant over there in New Orleans, Willie Mays. Hold on. I got some young ladies who want to take a picture. Come on, y'all. Let's get this picture popped. I'm doing, I'm doing an interview at the same time in Africa. This man is the bomb. Let's take the glasses off. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's what's up. Hello? I'm back. We're here. We're here. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I said I heard you have a favorite restaurant over there in New Orleans. Willie Mays. Oh, uh, Willie Mays, boy. Willie Mays is one of them, but it, I got to, you know, it, that's one of them. Uh huh. But yeah, man, but Willie Mays is popping. It's popping. What's your favorite dish over there? What you like? Yeah, they do the shrimp and grits and gravy. Okay. 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 So you ever come over here, that's what you gotta try. Oh, that's I am. I'm gonna try that. Not too much, but I would definitely try it. You grew up in New York, so how is the transition from being up in New York to like being I don't know, do you live still live in Atlanta or are you just in New Orleans so far? Well the interesting thing is I've been doing this thing since I was 19 years old. So I travel all around the world. So me, I don't live one specific place. I live everywhere. Mm-hmm. So me coming to New Orleans and everybody know me from house party is a beautiful thing because everybody loves me everywhere I go. Yeah, definitely. So I have a question. Three, are you on? Yes, I'm here. Oh, what's okay. The what um, what do you do you like most about your character in CIS? That they let me be me. They they okay. they they respect us for who we are and what we do and what we bring to the character. That that's the main thing that I like about your NCI song about my character. They let me do what I do and how I do what I do. I'm doing an interview I'm I'm doing an interview in Africa right now. So yeah, they these are the president. Thank you. So yeah, I, I I love the fact that I'm allowed to do what I do and how I do it. How you doing, baby? Respect, man. And they they let me do what I do on the show. So that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, brother. Kudos to you. Are you done, Cree? Yes, I'm done. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate okay. it. So you could keep listening. Um, my next question is about house party. Would you do another house party reunion? I would love it. I'm, I'm working on a script right now to produce the pitch to the producers for house party six. Oh, that'll be hot. I'll watch that. I said to my son, you don't know what house party is. He was like, Mom, of course I know what house party is. Okay, we have a, uh, there's another fan of yours. His name is Charles Haskell out of New York, and he wants to know how did you get it together after the um, accident and continue finding various acting jobs? A lot of times I have a lot of other actors that's coming up in the game, and they and and I just try to inspire them. A lot of times I meet a lot of people around the world that's interested in trying to trying to do what they you know do in the game of of, of acting. So what I do is I try to inspire them, okay. and that's the main thing that helps me keep going. Is trying to inspire the next ones coming up. Right. Right. So How was it working on both the Cosby show and then going to Here and Now? Just tell me how you transpired over the years, your growth. Well, it's a sad situation that Mr. Cosby is going through right now. Mm-hmm. But he was one of the biggest inspirations in my life because, you know, he used to inspire me and tell me what I need to do as far as doing comedy, what I need to do to be successful in comedy. 
to so to see him going through what he's going through right now is very sad. Because mm. at the end of the day, he's still is rich to me, but it's just unfortunate that things that he did in his past is now dictating his future. So, right. Right. you know, it, it hurts. Let me put it like this. Things that he is being alleged, because he ain't been, uh, you know, found, mm-hmm. acquitted, you know, he's not, uh, he's not fit of innocent or guilty of the things that he did, but I just want to say the things that he's been accused of doing is very hurtful because the man inspired me by one one quote, he just told me, chill, tell the truth. So when I do my comedy, I just tell the truth. Yeah. And it, it bothers me because now I'm successful based off of the things that he told me. So those things really bother me, man, you know? It really yeah, bothers me. I can imagine. I can definitely imagine. So do you have any, what I have a question is, do you have any regrets in your life? If you could go back and change anything, would you? Well, I would say that um, I wish I would have made a, a, a different choice, you know what I mean, uh, especially when it came to riding that motorcycle at night, you know what I mean? Because my kids, you know, I love my children, and I just feel sometimes that I short, I shortchanged my children. My children told me that, Daddy, we had never be shortchanged because whatever we did, you was always there. And mm-hmm. and whatever we needed instruction with, throwing a ball, running a ball, wrestling, football, you was, regardless of whether you could show us or not, you was always there. Even though right. they tell me that, I, you know, it still makes me feel like, dang, man, you know, I wish I could have thrown that ball with them, you know what I mean? So, but they were like, yeah, nah, man. They're like, no, we just we just need you to be there. That's all. Right. And, I, and it, it makes me feel like that, you know what I mean? So, that makes a big difference. Yeah, I But that's one of the that. biggest differences. It's like, I just want to be there for my children. You think... I know that's right. <laughs> Do you think that your children motivate you? Are they like your biggest motivators and supporters, your family? Of course, My kids children. kept me alive. My kids kept me alive. If it wasn't for them, I probably would have gave up. I understand mm-hmm. that. Like right now, my, one of my sons, my oldest son, is, is is been living with me for the past three months. You know, on location that in Cass New Orleans, and that's a, you know that helps a lot. Mhm. You know, him being here with me and seeing things. That's cool, man. That about to run me off the sidewalk. Worry about me. <laughs> Got me up the side. Won't worry about a bee. Yeah. Okay. That's amazing. My son so, is about to call in, I think, and ask a question. Where's your son at? He's in Vermont. He's in school. He's in college. He went as far away from me as he could because. I was also in a car accident, and then I had breast cancer three years ago. So I kind of feel like how you feel. Okay, so what you want? You want you you, you want a pity party? No, because I'm not gonna give you one. A pity party? No, I'm not. I'm, not, I'm, I'm sure tired. not gonna give you one because you are strong <laughs> as you you you're here because of your strength. So right. if you're looking That's for a pity party, I... you're not gonna get one. No, I'm not asking for one. Trust me. I'm I know you're not. I know you're not. I just, I just put that out there. Oh, okay. Ask Diane. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to give up, and she's like, just pray about it. No, oh, no, I, I, I know. I just put that out there because she threw it out there like I'm gonna be like, oh, I'm so woe is me. That ain't gonna happen. She's stronger no, than I am. No, no, no. The thing that's keeping me going, like I said, is it's always one thing. Like after my car accident, it was like I had to, you know how it is. When you wake up, you want to talk, 
I don't know if it happened to you or if it was the same, but I wanted to talk and I couldn't talk. Exactly. And the thing is, but people don't understand, you hear everything going on around you. Yeah, you're looking around, but you can't speak. You can't verbalize. Exactly. Which you can't open your mouth, but you're mumbling. <laughs> I understand. So he has a poetry. He's texted me. He has a poetry contest reading. I have to send the link. He won a poetry <laughs> contest, so he's like, he has to go to a show. My show starts in 20 minutes. That boy got lyrics in motion. That's what <laughs> I call it, poetry. Lyrics in motion. So he started a group called Rise Up, and Rise Up is like the different people he brings together in his school, different people with different that come from different countries and go to his school, different races, different backgrounds. He's like, Mom, i never seen, like, kids in my school. They have, like, 50000 in one account, and they could transfer it to another account. And I'm oh, like, yeah. you don't have to worry about that. That's going to be you one day. So that's why I don't... No, no, no. It, 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 it ain't no if it can be him. It's going to be him. Yeah, right. It's be always him. remember, always look at things as not if. It, I never looked at anything as if. It is going to be. It will be. It has to be. That's the rules. That's the rules. Yeah, that's, that's real. True. That's real. Thank you for that. That's, that's how true. I get down. Well, that's how I always got down. I remember, and that, and that ain't start. When I was seven years old, I used to visit my family. We used to go to to the Kingdom Hall, Jehovah's Witnesses, and I used to see my whole family on stage performing live. At the end of the day, if all of us didn't make it, one of us made it, because I saw us all on stage. We all didn't make it, but one of us made it, because I, I visualized the that I, I saw myself on stage. Mm-hmm. And, and we all didn't make it, but I did make it. That's true. And that's you the believed. rule. Yeah, you believed. I believed. And that's the rule. Yeah, your thoughts are powerful. Cree, I'm going to no, take I'm, her off the mute because she has some things to say. She wants to say right. something. All right. Go ahead and say it. All right, we gotta um, hurry up because I gotta I gotta get back to work. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They look, they're, um, looking at, they're looking at me real crazy right now. Okay. I think you're so. Um, I love the way you're inspiring others, and um, the way that you have um, the the zest for life and the the way you keep your family and your children on the forefront. I think that's very powerful. And, um, Man, you know. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm here. I, I, because I have a testimony of my own. Because um, I was bleeding three parts of my brain, and I went in for brain surgery, and then I literally died on the table, and they brought me back, and um, then I had two strokes, and so my baby's autistic, and this was she was two weeks old when this happened, so we had to grow together. And I went from, they brought her in rehab, and I grew with her, grew, grew with her, and I had to learn to walk, talk, and everything over, all over again. And so I have that same zest for life. I know that God didn't take me from this earth because I had a, a reason for living. My purpose for life was not over yet. And that's her right there. And, yeah. And so... And yeah, so y'all be y'all be y'all be cracking me up, telling me these stories like, like as if I'm gonna give y'all a pity party, man. And no, then, and then I'm not I, I know, I, I listen. I know y'all not, but listen, the story is far from over. Yes, how you doing, I baby? Know that because the story I know that. is far I, from I, over. That's what I'm saying. I love the way you encourage. Yo, I, 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 I I'm yes, not inspired. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, sir. I, 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 I ain't tripping. I'm, what I'm saying to you is this. Your story just begun. Yeah. Your story, all, it just begun. 
you got a long story to tell from here. A long Desmond, close my bag up. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long, it's a, it's a long story to tell. No, it's in my backpack. It's open. He got a long story to tell. It's open. Yeah, it didn't. It, it was under my. It was under here. He got. He got a long. He got a long story to tell. Yes. It just, your story just begun. Yes. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. I like. You understand the story that you're gonna tell is for the rest of your life, yeah. and that's what I, I understand that. that the story that I'm telling is a lifelong story. It ain't. It ain't. It ain't a half story. You understand? Three, your story you're gonna tell me. is for the rest of your life. Yes. Free. Follow me yes, on sir. Instagram. I talk about okay. my entire life. I have asked um, Diane. Everything I post on my Facebook, it's on my Instagram. So follow me. Yeah, but what I'm saying, what I'm saying to you, boo, listen, listen to what I'm saying. The stories that we tell, like my story, I realize now, I realize that this is a story I'm going to tell until I die. The story, Mm -hmm. I'm learning every day. I am, I'm, I'm re-involving every day. Like every day, it's been 15 years since I had my accident, but it's still every day is a revolving story, which makes me realize that the things I'm going to go through, I'm going to go through until the day I die. Hmm. So it's not like, oh, I did so much right now. I did a lot right now. But you know what? There's so much more, and there's so much more is going to be told at Right at my casket. And you use yes. your, do you, you, I know you have charities. That's why I want to bring this to the first Because you go out there and you speak and you inspire. And I think that's what she was trying to say. And you have Correct. your charities and you do the um, Christopher Reeve Foundation and you have the Darren Mitchell Foundation. Y'all chill well, Mitchell, I'm sorry. Right. Well, I mean, the thing is, the Christopher Reeve Foundation, with all due respect, I love them, and I work with them, and I I have worked with them. But I realized that I, I, I had to go do my own foundation because I felt that African-American people in this country were underrepresented. They was not learning the information that they need to learn that they need to know what was going on or what kind of resources that was put out there for them to know in order for them to get what they need to know, what they need to do. And I just started my own foundation to inform the minority community the minority community about what they need to know. So that's what, so I just started my own foundation. You know, I work with the Christopher Reeve Foundation, but it made me go out and, and, and start my own so I could learn and teach other people, our people, what it is that they need to know as far as it goes with the, would be, would be, you know, uh, with, with our community. Let's put it like yes. that. And I, that's one of the reasons why I picked you, because what I said is when I had breast cancer, like the doctors had given me up on me, I saw Bill Dukes on TV say he was a 20-year survivor and he never did chemo. So I did a vegan diet, and what I realized is black people are underserved that we don't get representation in the hospital. Like the person I had that was supposed to be my advocate wasn't really my advocate. So that's why I told her to go to my Instagram because on there I teach people. I send out positive quotes and things like that, but I also teach people about the importance of health, the importance of keeping your colon clean and ginger and apple cider vinegar, whatever, 
like whatever things I spend time researching and I do diet plans for people to heal them from diabetes or high blood pressure. When people have cancer, they send them to me so I could tell them, okay, like my doctor said to me, you could eat, I did research like, as soon as I found out, and I found out carbohydrates, sugar, and all those things could kill you because it feeds the cancer, and then there are other foods that actually kill the tumor. And my doctor said, oh, don't worry about that. The chemo will take care of everything. But I didn't listen to her. So that's why, right, right, right. That's why I'm inspired by you going out well, and doing well, things. Yeah, but that's why I say about y'all just understanding that our story is it's never over. Right. It's never over. It's never over. You got a long, lifelong story. Mm hmm. Yeah, we're we going to have to set up another time because my time right here is very limited, but I promise y'all. We're going to get back, man. I I, I got to go back to work. But we're going to set up another time. We will be in touch. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you guys very much. Love you guys. All right. Love you. Bye. Love you too. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Yo, lay on the line. Man or mouse. Yo, my time is up. Yo, Ted, hit the button. Lay it on the line. Yo, it's all or nothing. That's real talk right there, nephew. I like the way you laid it on the line.